Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Woo! I walk in the room and everyone knows I'm there. It happens all the time, just not quite that noisily. So, good morning. morning. How y'all doing? It's good to be here. It's great to be here in the great outdoors. I'm going to wear my sunglasses because it's bright and shiny, not because I don't want you to see my beautiful eyes. So, But uh, let's pray. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so thankful, Father. I thank you, God, that you're for us. And that you've always been for us. And that we have no one who who will will have our back like you do. And so I praise you for that. And thank you for that. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would speak through me this morning. Get across what you want said. And I thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So I was just... Earlier this week, I put a I seen it, put a post on Facebook, and it said, said "God's for you. You might as well take sides with Him." <laughs> and it's so true, because so much of the time, like God's for us. He's for us, even even in our darkest times, even in our lowest times, even in times when we're running from Him and don't want nothing to do with Him. He's still for us. He's like, "I still love you." The Bible says that while we were yet sinners. Jesus died. Christ died for us. You know, so even in our very worst and in our very lowest, that um, God sent his best for us and Jesus died for us. And how much more can he tell us that he's for us before we can get it, right? Sometimes those things kind of click in our head and we're like, "Ah, I don't know. Well, this is happening or that's happening. And I've been there so much, man, in my life. And and it's hard, and sometimes we just got to talk to him through it. But I just want to encourage everyone: God is for you. And the Bible says, if God's for you, who can be against you? Now, that's not like so you can make a list, right? It's not like the hoot owl thing. Like we go go to our, we were looking out our back patio door the other day, and there's a big old owl in the in the tree, and it looked pretty cool. And we're thinking, oh well, who? It's an owl, you know. Get it? Hoot, 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 right? Anyway, those dudes are pretty, but they'll go eat your rabbits and mice and stuff. Get the mice, but leave the rabbits, right? I like rabbits. But anyway, but who can be against you? It's not He's not asking you, well, give me a list of them. I'll take care of them, boy. Right? It's not, it's not like Scarface, you know? It, but what he's saying is, if I'm for you, who can be against you? Ask yourself that. Who? Right? He, he said, what's going to separate you from my love? And then he gives you a list of all these things. That, and he says, no, in all things we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Right? So it's not, not like I want a list. I want to know who they are. When he's saying who can, it's like, like he's saying what can separate us. If God be for us, who can be against us? If you got the... the, the the creator of the universe who spoke a word and it was so important that it is still going out to this day. This universe is expanding exponentially. It's a fancy word for a cowboy. Exponentially as we're sitting here this morning, right? And if God is for us, that same God who spoke that word, when he says, I'm for you, kind of makes it like, well, who can be against me? Well, what what should I be worried against? What what's gonna gonna um, what's gonna take me out, or what's gonna do this? I tell you, we we had a pretty rough last two months. You know, it didn't go like I told God it should. And sometimes I think we want to be comfortable, and comfort is our enemy. One of the things I'm learning in my life, comfort is my enemy because if I'm comfortable, I'm not growing. Right? The enemy takes this stuff and he goes and he says, you know what? I'm going to use it and I'm going to wipe you out and I'm going to do this. And for some reason, sometimes 
it ha like like bad things happen to us and we don't know why but God didn't do it to me but in the midst of it he's blessed me in the midst of it he's got me through in the midst of it he showed me that he's for me and if he's for me even even this big bad thing that everyone's afraid of all the time can't take me out until it's my time there's nothing that can take me out until it's my time because I've got the king of the universe who's for me and that's a big confidence you get right but I don't want to get comfortable and I don't want anyone around me to get comfortable and if I ever get to where everyone's too comfortable you need to gig me right because that's not how things should work right I want to be stretching I want to be moving forward I want to be trying different things and and going going with different things and like a lot of the things I try don't work but hey at least I'm growing and learning I may not know what works but I can tell you what don't you know and as we do that we grow and so so um, one thing I learned about horses is unless they move their feet you ain't going nowhere right and so sometimes I'd rather them to move their feet where I don't want them to go. I'd rather move them move their feet in ways I don't want them to move their feet. You know, like bucking and stuff like that, right? But at least we're going somewhere. At least we're not sold up and in the same place and, and not able to go anywhere, right? And and for a horse to not be able to move their feet is death to them, right? I was talking to a a man earlier this week and they, he was asking me about horses he's a city guy and, and um he's like i like dogs you know but but they're just something about a horse and i was like yeah i was like a dog's a predator like we're predators too like they're a prey animal so when they come to us they're coming to us hey they're just joining the pack but there's something about a horse when a horse submits to you when a horse says hey I'm I'm gonna be with you they're giving you their entire life they are a, a prey animal whereas as the dogs a predator right and so they're giving you something they're not just giving you a little bit they're giving you their their ability to survive and they're saying to you guess what bud I trust you with my life I think about that. I, I watch horses all the time and I see people be mean to them and nasty to them and get them to where, where, where they just have no spirit, no heart left. And I think some of those horses are like, okay, go ahead and eat me already, man. I'm over it. And some of us feel like that with life sometimes too. We like, we're so beat up and we're so tired and things are going so our way. And so we, 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 instead of giving, up our ability to survive to someone we know we can trust we're letting go of that ability to survive and saying just eat me I'm done I don't care if I live or die or what happens and it's a totally different attitude and it's a totally different response and I've been in both and I can tell you which response is way better right whether you feel so beat up that you can't get up and you can't go forward or whether you're surrendering everything you are and everything you have to the one who created the universe and the one who gave his life for you. It makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference in our life. And so when I think about the horse, that's why I love the horse. It's because that horse is partnering with me. That horse is saying, do you know something? I want to be with you. And really, in a lot of ways, I'm giving them my life, too. You know? When I'm at those cult starting challenges and I don't know a horse or I'm starting a cult at home with nobody watching, when I'm getting on a horse, he's giving me his life. And I'm saying, you know something? I'll trust you with mine, too. And then we have a partnership. And then we have something that's unbreakable. And we can go forward and, and never... never um, I mean, we'll have some hiccups here and there. Like, they might say, where are you taking me? And I might be saying, why are you moving like that? That's a little rough, right? But we got a moving relationship, and we're giving each other everything. And see, when we come to Jesus, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, 
saying, you have control of our feet. That's why the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. You know what he's saying? I, I can, everywhere you step, sometimes you step and you don't mean to step in, but you're stepping right where you're supposed to be. I didn't understand that till I was training colts, right? Then I'll ask them to move their feet and they'll move their feet and they won't even think they're moving their feet in the right direction, but they're moving their feet. And then pretty soon it'll be right where I want and pretty soon they'll figure out, oh yeah, this is where I move my feet. This is how I do it. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. It's not about a religious requirement. It's about a relationship that was bought and paid for with the blood of a perfect sacrifice. The son of the creator of the universe. And in him, he's like, I want to move. I want you to be free to move in me and just step. Don't worry about where you're stepping and pretty soon you're going to find out that you're stepping right where I want you to be. And and you'll be moving right where I want you to go. And things will be working out for you like, like you never dreamed. Sometimes they don't work out for you and it looks like you're going to crash. And the next thing you know, God's blessing you bigger than ever. Isn't, isn't that cool? One of the things I learned... Another lesson, I learned a pastor from training horses, right? So if you ever feel like a horse, I, like my wife's like, why are you talking to me like a horse? And I'm like, because it works with horses. You need help because like you don't, you're not talking necklace like I told you to. My kids don't talk it either all the time, but a lot of times it works, right? One thing I learned is, you know how you can trust a horse? You just got to trust them. You know how that horse finds out he can trust me? He just got to trust me. And sometimes it's giving up everything you got. Sometimes it's giving up who you are. Sometimes there's a thing called vulnerability. Anybody ever hear of vulnerability? I uh, listen, the expert in this on the world is a lady who's a genius that's pretty foul mouth, but some of the stuff that comes out of her mouth that's, that is so profound, I'm like, where'd you, how'd you learn the Bible like that? Because it's like something that you would see or hear thing God would say. But I think in the church, sometimes we get so religious and we get so caught up in religion that we're not open to what God's really saying to us. Jesus had the same thing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees when it, where they were so caught up in the, in the religious cycle of things that they weren't listening to things around. And God's like, I'm going to find someone to get this out because I'm so for you and I love you so much and I want you to learn this. And when you learn this, you're going to find Jesus, the source of everything in it. And I don't care how you get to me, but I want you to get to me. Not through religious regulations, but through grace and my goodness and my love and my peace. There's only one way in his name is Jesus and through that we find hope and peace and love and joy and he will do everything he can to get you to that hope he already has it will just rest in him and just trust in him and know that he is for you how do we know we just trust him I don't want to trust him when I was sick I didn't want to trust him but everywhere I would turn I would look and a scripture would open up, and it was in Joshua. And it, actually, I should read that, because I think it goes really good. My message gets changed sometimes, so I'm sorry. But I'm not. I have a deal with the Holy Spirit that I'll go wherever he leads me. And if he doesn't show up, I don't have to. So if I ever don't show up, you know why, right? Anyway, he's talking to Joshua, and he says, says, Look, Joshua, I know you're old and well up in years. And I was like, Okay, God, are you telling me I'm old? Like, I'm not. I'm like, I'm like in the prime, man. I mean, look, I feel like I'm in the prime on the inside now. I can't, can't feel no better, look no better. I mean, I got it down. This is the prime. And you call me old, right? But he says, But you have much more ground to take and I knew at that moment he wasn't calling me old but he's like hey you're maturing you're getting to a place where I can really use you where I can really do something with you and you're not fighting me every step of the way so even in the midst of this battle even in the midst of this I'm talking to you 
and letting you know that it ain't over. Not once did I think it was over. I did get discouraged one time. I was coming back from the doctor and and um, <clears throat> we had to go stop at Rite Aid at the pharmacy and I remember looking at the pharmacy and I was just down on the dump. So I was like, okay, I give up. I just, I'm done with this stuff. And I look, look up and there's this bus and it's stuck in traffic right in front of me. And it says, you have a great future. And it just stayed there forever. And I was like, that bus is annoying. Why is it right in front of me? I can't see it. Then I read the sign. And I heard what God was saying. And then my head lifted up. And I knew that it was going to work out. And I knew that God had my back. And I knew that no matter what it looked like or no matter how I felt that I was going to get through. Man, I don't know. People say that when you have Jesus, you have a crutch. Man, I don't know how you call him a crutch. When you have Jesus, he's your life. Like, I don't know how you make it through this world without him. Because he's faithful. He's true. He gives us hope. He, he gives us a future. And when you're going through the midst of the battle, he's like, I didn't send this to you. But I'm going to get you through it. And then there's that thing that keeps coming up. Do you want to be comfortable or do you want to grow? So I want to grow. So I'm going to stretch everyone and everything around me till they're so annoyed with me, they want to shoot me. But if I'm not doing that, I'm not living. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not comfortable with where I'm at because every day I want to grow in him. In him we live and move and have our being. You hear what I'm saying? We, we live in America, the greatest country on earth, but we're all about being comfortable. And most of us are comfortable compared to other countries. And we're still not satisfied. And the reason that we're not satisfied is because we're so content on being comfortable that we don't want to grow. And then we stop growing. If you stop growing, you're going to go the other way. I don't ever want to be like that. I've been like that. It don't work. I want to grow. I want to be better than I was the day before. And um, I learned that from horsemen, man. You can tell a cowboy. The cowboy's different from a horseman. A cowboy will do what he's got to do. But a horseman, they'll do what's best for the horse. They're not worried about being comfortable. They're not worried about this other thing or what anyone else thinks. They're going to do what's good for the horse. And you know who it usually works out better for in the long run? The horseman. Because it's a relationship. And that's who God is for us. I was reading. I hate taking scripture out of context. So, but I got this real cool. I left this real cool note in the Bible for myself. I do that sometimes. I have something that's really profound. So I'll just put it on a piece of paper and leave it in the Bible. Every once in a while it jumps out and bites me. And usually it's right when I need it right and so um i'm so thankful for that but um <clears throat> i'm gonna read in job chapter eight now here we take this these scriptures and we say well what bildad and all these other friends of job told him is gospel and i hear people quote some of the things they were saying and and then in the end of job god actually says your friends are stupid why would you listen to them and then we go around, well, it's in the Word of God. We're quoting it. Well, listen, guess what? Just because it's in the Bible, God's giving you an example. It's not saying that's what you do. Look in context, right? Find it in context. What is the Scripture saying in context? And then you will know. When you take the text out of context, all you're left with is a con. But that doesn't mean... All the stuff Bildad and all these other dudes said was wrong either. There was some truth in those too. So learn to discern. Learn to listen to the Holy Spirit and not get caught up in religion. Like, Pastor James, you're really hitting religion today. You know what? 
I'm, I'm from now on, I will hit religion with all my heart just like Jesus did because religion is just as evil as murder or stealing or anything else because God didn't come to give us a religion. He came to give us a savior. Jesus did it. He called the religious whitewashed sepulchers, man. He called it like it is. And we've got to get back to that. There's a world that is sick and dying and looking for a savior and they got roadblocks and that roadblocks religion. And we got to get away from religion into a savior. Now you're saying, well, you're, you're hitting religion and like there's a lot of religions. Religion just has to do with how you view God, right? I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus. I'm talking about a walking and a talking and a being with him that makes all the difference in the world, right? So here Bildad is talking and he said, and the headline here is God is totally just, right? <laughs> and he's right. I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with that. He's like, like, then Bildad, the shoe height, replied, I think he was a horseshoer. He was a Shuite? Never mind. How long will you say such things? Your words are a blustering wind. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty prefer what is right? When your children sinned against Him, He gave them over to the, to the penalty of their sin. But if you will look to God and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even those, He will rouse Himself on your behalf and restore you to the rightful place. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Now, as I was praying, you know, the Holy Spirit kind of put this in, in my heart, but um, <clears throat> the scripture come up, and then I had a note in my Bible with the scripture. Isn't that kind of funny? And it said this, and it says this, go for it. But I have go and then a for it. You know what for represents to me? In, in Hebrew, you have, uh, have um, the lake is the fourth letter of the alphabet. And it represents a door, an open door. And so when it says go for it, what it's saying to me is go through the open door. Go for it. The door's open. The windows of heaven's open. God's created us for this time and this season. And that's good news. He's saying, go for it. Go through the open door. What you had in the past will seem small, with, small compared with the great prosperity you'll have in the future. Isn't that cool? God is getting ready to release those that have been hidden in obscurity. Your time of being in the cocoon of the forming process is almost complete. He is causing you to awaken by the renewing of your mind. By the what? The renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the, by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now watch this. Your time in the cocoon of the forming process is almost complete. He is causing you to awaken to the renewing of your mind to the image of the heavenly man, preparing you to do things you always dreamed about doing. Now what is he talking about? You're a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. We're renewed by our mind. We have a conscious and our conscious thinks and then it drops into our subconscious. And do you know all of our actions drop down like that? That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We hear the word of God and we hear what God's saying. And as we hear it and hear it and hear it, it drops from our conscious and it drops down into our subconscious. And then when it gets into our subconscious, it drops into our heart and out of our heart, we act. You guys hear what I'm talking about? So some of us have been so beat up in this world. And maybe we you've heard that you're no good. Maybe you've heard you can't make it. Maybe you've heard you're not a cowboy or whatever. It's a lie. When God created you for this time. When God created you for this place. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. 
just a lie straight from the pit of hell. So it's important what we hear. That's why it says faith comes by hearing or being able to discern. Go upside down, inside out. As a, as a great motivational speaker, and I love him. His name is Bob Proctor. I don't know if he's a believer or not, but he's wise. But he always talks about God, and he does it in a way because he's secular that, like, I just know he knows Jesus. He's got to, just as cool as he is in the scriptures he uses. But one thing he, he I learned from him is the upside down, inside out. And then I had a mentor that talked talk to me. He goes, it's the head, heart, hands, always. Head, heart, hands. That's what the Bible's about, and that's what Scripture's about. And um, <clears throat> it, it's really good news for us, right? You're a spirit, right? Those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and truth. You're going to live forever. Could you like it or not? Like, you don't get a vote on that. Location's your choice, not God's. But we're all going to live forever. We're a spirit. We have a soul. We have a mind. We have a will. We have emotions. And God's given us tools how we connect our spirit and our mind. And when we, we get flowing with that, then our actions through our body go beyond our senses what we can see hear smell taste and touch told you i'd stretch you guys and goes to faith because faith is to the spirit what the senses are to the flesh we think if we can't see it touch it smell it feel it it don't exist i can feel the wind someone told me there was wind and i never felt it would i believe them Probably not, but I can feel in my heart, too, that he's real, and I can feel his wind blowing through us right here and right now and saying, I want to connect with you in a way that I've never connected with you before, because he's that good. He's, I guess, not about regulations, because I fulfilled it completely on the cross. It's fully about a love relationship, one-on-one. -on -one. We can go to him and say, Father, here I am. Like, I'm, I'm no longer just James. I, I can lay my titles down. I can lay my roles down and just come and say, Hey, here I am. I'm, I'm just coming to you as I am. No, no preconditions. I just want to connect with you. And we'll find that he's the source. The world's looking for the source. And I've met him. And if I don't share him, how selfish. That's no no better than if we're not sharing, if we have plenty to eat and don't share our food. And I don't have a clock, so it might be two o'clock. I'm good. It's no better than, than not sharing our food. Right? I want to share him. Now, I love this. In Romans 4, 13, it says, It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by works. What are works? Works are things that we can do in the flesh, right? Do you know we can do good works with the wrong heart and it still be wrong? So, so he's saying... It's not about works. It's about faith. It's about trusting Him. It's about being like that horse and saying, Do you know something? I'm going to give you my entire life and submit to you my entire ability to survive. And I'm going to trust you and watch what He does, man. You know that, that a horse can hear your heartbeat from four feet away? You know what? I want to be able to hear God's heartbeat. And He's not four feet away because He's everywhere and He lives inside me. It was not through the law 
that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For those who live by law are heirs. Uh, for those, <coughs> for if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless. It's like it doesn't matter all the good you do. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not about what we do to make us righteous. It's about what he done that has made us righteous and holy and just. And we could never earn it. Because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Listen to that. Therefore. Now you got to watch. Whenever it says therefore, you always ask yourself, what's it there for? In Texas, they call that a clue. And I got some friends from Texas that need all the help they can get. So God loved them so much, he put it in there just for them. Therefore, the promise comes by faith. By what? By faith, so that it may be by grace. By what? By grace, and may be guaranteed. Now, that's better than the bank can do. Like, you can take your billions of dollars and stick them in the bank, and they're only going to protect like 250,000 of it. You got a guarantee with that, but we don't, tr we trust that more than we trust God with our lives and with everything we got. And he's like, I'll give you a guarantee, but it's not going to come from what you do. It's going to come from what I've done because I see so much value in you that I gave my best. And I guarantee this. And may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. You know what he what he's saying? Not just to the Jews, but to those who come into the faith of Abraham. And guess who that is? That's all of us, man. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead. And calls things that are not as though they were. How am I doing on time? Five minutes. Good. I'm going to go ten. Maybe fifteen. We'll see. He is our Father. Let me look at this. So, okay, I got it. I love this. It, he is our Father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. But several years ago, we had a little French bulldog and we took him to a vat to get, because he had a little bit of a, a limp and he pushed him down on the table and and because he he was um, <coughs> wiggling and, and the little dog snapped at the vat and but he splintered his um, spinal cord. He didn't spl splinter it, but a splinter from the bone come out and hit it. And it paralyzed him. And so we went to the, we went and got him from there because the vet tech told us what happened and um, took him to a vet, to a vet hospital. And so we were in there and they're like, well, it's going to be like $2,500 in surgery, but it probably won't work. And this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And so me and Linda set out in the car. This is our baby, man. He's so awesome. I was like, like, you know, what do you say, Father? What are you saying about this situation? And so we heard and God said, don't do the surgery because there was, there's a pretty small, there's a much a chance that he'd just come back on its own as if to do the surgery. So we're like, we ain't doing the surgery. And so we'd go visit him because he was in there for several days. And we'd walk him out and we'd look at him and say, don't you listen to what they're saying. They don't know what they're saying. I know what God says. And then we brought him home, and Linda would do, like sometimes you gotta do what you can do, right? So they said, well, you need to do windmills, and you need to do this and stuff, so you take his feet, and she'd go 500 times this way, 
500 times this this way turn him over and do it on the other side twice a day twice a day and we'd pray for him. my friend Dwayne Williams sings the song get up get up get up in Jesus name and so we'd play his play his album and we'd pray over it and we're like God we're not letting go of this this is a gift from us and you perfect that which concerns me and I know you're gonna heal this doll so I was flying back and forth from Texas and and I was at actually one of my favorite people on earth I was at his place and I was walking with him and I get a phone call and Linda's crying and I was like, like what's wrong she's like Morty and I was like oh my god wh what happened and she's like he got up and he's walking and you know what he walked for the rest of his life now let me tell you something we could have give up we could have listened to the vet and if we would have I don't know what would have happened but I trusted God dog God cared about my dog he cared about him so much that he got him up you know why because he cares about me and he cares about Linda the Bible says against all hope Abraham in hope believed and so become the father of many nations I just want to encourage you like man I've gone through so much in my life that I I couldn't anymore Abraham himself did too But God's worth it. He's worth believing in. He's worth giving your heart to. He's worth trusting. He's worth listening to his heartbeat that's not four, four feet away, but it's near you. It's with you. And we can surrender everything to him and know that he's got us in his hands. If you don't know him, man, you're smart. Don't waste your time. It's a waste. All you're going to get is peace and hope enjoy I mean you don't need that but if you're you're silly enough to do that all you got to do is believe in your heart confess with your mouth Lord Jesus I believe you come in my heart I accept you as my Savior if you are silly enough to say that prayer let us know amen thank you father for your word we love you and we give you the praise in Jesus name amen thank you for listening if you'd like to learn more about us check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.